Hello everybody and welcome back to The Rich Life. I'm so excited to introduce my new series, Girls Night In with The Rich Life. And to help me kick it off, I have a very special guest who's an expert at keeping the other girls in. Her name is Laura Tempesta. She is a world-renowned sports bra expert. She's the founder of Bravolution and Nike's former sports bra innovation director. I so enjoyed interviewing Laura. In fact, I went out after our interview and replaced my entire bra collection. Laura knows her stuff and I want you guys to get some great tips from this interview too because I know we've all had that question before, how to find the best bra right? So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome, Laura, to The Rich Life, and welcome to the inaugural edition of The Rich Life Girls Night In. I want you to know that I wanted you to be the first guest on this series because you are an expert in keeping the girls in. Thank you. It's such an honor, really. It's a pleasure. I'm really looking forward to talking to you. Women of all sizes, shapes, we all have this issue in common. It's like finding a good bra. I mean, and good is a low bar. Like I'm actually looking for great, but I'll settle for good. But why is that? Why do we all have problems finding a good bra? Well, you're definitely not alone. Um, I would say most women are settling when it comes to wearing a bra. Then um, I think if most people find something that is good enough, they think they've actually, they've, uh, they've won the lottery. If they get something that's good enough, which is a really sad. Um, part of the reason is because bras haven't changed very much in the past 100 years. They're wait, 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 100 years? In the past 100 years, they have not changed very much. So uh, bras were actually invented um, in the early 1900s. And the design of the bra has not changed much at all. Um, really, the only thing that's really changed is the introduction of the underwire and molding and some padding. But the general design of the bra has been essentially the same. And it's essentially a tight rubber band that goes around your rib cage uh, with two straps that dig into your shoulders. And that, that has not changed for a very long time. And unfortunately, there isn't a ton of innovation in bras. So um, a lot of the complaints that women have are just universal. And there's a lot of room for improvement when it comes to bras. And it's like the, the bra industry has been dominated by men for generations and decades. And I honestly think that that's part of the issue is that because the people who were dominating the industry didn't wear the product and there weren't any really vocal complaints about it because there is something about, you know, I have to say there's something about being a woman and just accepting that there's pain in your life. So I think mm -hmm. that a lot of women have this white noise in their life of ill fitting bras and they think that that's just the way there's, that's just the way it is and there's nothing they can do about it. Um, and so like this really like this, I felt like this is my thing. This is my passion. This is how I want to change the world. I want to make um, better fitting bras and I, and I want to help women find bras that, that fit, fit a lot better. Um, it, just because it's, you know, that it is a white noise in so many yeah. people's lives. And, and you just kind of like put up with this minor irritation that quite frankly, men would never put up with. And, um, and it does yeah. affect you. It affects your life. It affects, you know, you know, even if you don't like are conscious of it, it's there like affecting you. Yeah, I, I totally agree with what you said about the white noise. I think that I'm totally guilty of that. And with me, uh, my issue is that I have a small frame, but um, I've got some pretty big girls for my frame. <laughs> and so, you know, it's it's difficult uh, to find the right bra that fits in the right places. And so that's what I want to talk about next is how do you know that you're wearing the right bra? How is it supposed to fit? Because so many of us have been wearing ill-fitting bras for so long, we don't actually know what a good bra feels like. And not only that, women aren't educated in what good bra fit looks like. Um, and it's like this kind of like this secret that's kept by bra fitters at elite shops and, and bra shops. And you have to, I mean, it's really interesting when you think about how few women know what, what good bra fit is actually supposed to look like. Yeah. And that's why there are so many women wearing the wrong bra. But it's a great question. Um, and so what, one of the very first things I'll say is if you're thinking about your bra or you're thinking about your breasts, you're in the wrong bra. So the right bra... You, you shouldn't it shouldn't distract you in any way um and it in your breast shouldn't be distracting you either so if either of those things is coming up for you then there's something about the bra that isn't right and um and so the two biggest bra fit issues are cups that are too small and bands that are too big 
So, so it's very rare that I see someone who's in a band that's too small, and, and it's fairly rare to see somebody who's in a cup that's too big. So if you are in the wrong bra, it's probably one of those two issues. And so when I assess somebody, there's a few things that I look for. We just go through every part, part of the bra. Um, and we can do like a little like, you know, I have a bra here and I can I can point out the different. Yes, parts. please I do. I love props. <laughs> OK. I don't know, can you see? Yes. See uh -huh. um, OK, so so this is just like this is a, a pretty typical everyday bra here. And this little the center front part here is called the center front gore, this little triangle. Um, this is called a cradle. This is the cup. Obviously, this is a, a molded cup that doesn't have any sewn lines in it. This is the shoulder strap. And then these are the wings here in the back. Um, and there's something called sister sizing that I will get into in a little bit because that's also an important aspect of bra fit. But we're talking about just while the bra is on you, is it the right bra? Um, the very first thing you want to look for is if it does have this little center front part here, is it sitting right up against your sternum? Because if there's any space in between where that piece is and your body, that means the cups are too small. That's why it's sitting away because the cups are, are pushing it away and it, it doesn't have enough capacity. Um, so, so since the cup doesn't have enough capacity, it's pushing it away from your body and that's why that's not sitting against your body. So that's clue number one that you might be having the issue of cups too small. The second clue that your cups might be too small is if the neckline here, this part of the cup, is digging into your breast and causing something we call double busting. So if mm. it looks like, like if you can see like a little bump and then the bra, then that means that the cup is probably too small. Um, and, and usually I, I say like, you know, if, if one, there are certain things that most women have one cup that's bigger than a brother, another, like one breast that's bigger than another, that's totally typical. Mm -hmm. So if, if only one of your breasts has a little bit of that indent and the other one doesn't, um, then that's probably, that's probably fine. But if both of them are showing that, then for sure you've got cups that are too small. Um, another way to see if your cups are too small is a, a trick that I use is I take these four fingers and I lay like where my breast tissue starts going to this top, the top of this neckline. And if there are more than four fingers between the top of the breast tissue and this neckline, your cups are probably too small. So that's another, that's another clue. Now, on the other hand, if you're one of the few people in, that has the cups too big issue, what you'll see is a space. You'll see a space on both cups at the top of the cup in between your breasts. So if you can see a little space there, then it's too big. Or if you see wrinkles in the cup, then it's also probably too big. And then for band, um, band too big, which is which is often the, the most common issue, there's a few things that you'll see. You'll either see the band starting to ride up in the back, so it looks like a frown, and I call that an unhappy bra. So <laughs> if your bra is frowning in the back, it means your band is too big. Um, and you, you should probably be in a smaller band size. And the reason why that's important is that the, the support from the bra actually doesn't come from the straps, it comes from the band. And if you find like your straps are digging in, that means you're putting, you're allowing too much of the support of the bra to come from the straps and not the band. So you wanna make sure that your band is super secure. It's like the foundation of a house. And if it's too big, then it's, it's not giving you the support it needs. Another way that you can see is if, if the band is too big is to, to pull your, to put your hand around and then pull pull your band out and if you it can pull out more than the width of your hand then it's too big or it's too old because another um I'm trying it now <laughs> so another thing a lot of women are guilty of is keeping a bra for too long and, and what, what people will say is a, a bra shouldn't have a birthday like it shouldn't be in your your wardrobe for more than one year I'll okay. say if you have a lot of bras in in your wardrobe then you can definitely keep a bra for more than one year and bras are expensive and I, and I get that but if it's gotten to the point where you can stretch it out more than the width of your hand, um, and that's on, on the middle hook or the loosest hook, um, if you can stretch it out more than the width of your hand, then, then it's probably time for either going down a band size or a new bra. And then the final thing you wanna look at is the strap position. So um, it's really popular in everyday bras for the strap to be offset to the side like this. There aren't very many everyday bras that have the strap right over the, the nipple area. Um, so we call that the point of bust or the apex. So there aren't, but um, when it's right over that area, if you have narrow or sloping shoulders, your straps are less likely to fall off. But since this is the most popular design right now in everyday bras off to the side, if you have narrow or sloping shoulders, you're gonna have issues with your straps falling off throughout the day. And so another way that you can tell, like, is this a good, is the strap position of this bra good for me? Is to, again, like, so again, so I use my fingers a lot, but these are just little tips that you can use. So again, so take your hand, put it on the edge of your shoulder like this. And if this finger is covering or partially covering the strap, 
it's probably gonna fall off on you. And what you wanna look for is a bra that either has the straps closer to the, to the, to the nipple, like over the nipple, or maybe a racerback style. Or another thing you can look at is like, you know, which hook are you hooking on? Because if you're hooking on the very last hook here, then your straps are gonna be more wide set than if you're hooking on the, on the middle one because you're bringing the straps in when you're doing that. So that's another thing that you can look for too. So, so those are the, the, main, the main things to look for. And then in terms of breast shape, um, there are so many different breast shapes. There are breasts that are top heavy, there are breasts that are bottom heavy, there are breasts that you know, are, are you know, pointing east-west. Like there's all these different breast shapes and every breast shape is beautiful. You know, they're, just, they're just different. Um, but for example, if you're somebody who has more of a bottom heavy brush shape and you don't have a lot of tissue on top, then um, a demi cup or uh, a, a cup that is a little bit more like this one that doesn't isn't called a full coverage is probably going to fit you better because if you have a full coverage cup, you know, there's going to be fabric or foam in an area where you don't have any breast tissue and then you'll have all this space in the top. So you also want to make sure that the shape of the cup is one that fits your breasts well. Okay. That's wow. I never thought of it that way. I was just sort of like, always like, well, what looks best with what I'm wearing? Not necessarily my breast shape. Uh, but I want to, before we move on, I want to also talk about another issue that I think a lot of women have is, is the issue of back fat. Mm -hmm. Is that when sort of your, um, your, your skin, um, your tissue around here is just hanging out? Um, is that caused by a band that's too small? Because I know we talked about bands that are too big, but what causes that when you're kind of hanging out in the back? Uh, it's a great question. Um, and then back fat is one of my biggest pet peeves because I feel like it's this thing that gives women, women become really self-conscious about it. And it's a problem that's caused by the bra, not by their body. Um, so, and what I mean by that is Back, so just imagine like pot roast, like when you put string on pot roast, it causes mm -hmm. those little ridges. And most bras, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see that there's an elastic on top here and elastic on the bottom? Yes. So this is how most bras are designed. And that's why most bras will cause back fat. Now, yes, absolutely. If you are in a band too small, you're going to be seeing a lot of back fat because it's going to be digging in and there's going to be tissue spilling over. And, and for sure that that can be an issue. But even if you're in the right bra size, you can have back fat. Um, and it's because of this. It's because it's like, again, these are like the, the, the strings on your pot roast digging into you. They have a different amount of stretch than this fabric does. And so it's just naturally going to give you those little bumps. And so what you want to look for is you, there are bras that are designed where this entire panel has the, either the same amount of stretch. So either they don't have the elastic on the top and the bottom. It's like one elastic mm -hmm. panel the entire way. Or if they do have the elastic on the top and the bottom, this middle part stretches at about the same rate. So as long as this entire piece is, a stre is stretching at about the same rate, you're a lot less likely to have back fat. And How do we figure out the right size for, for our girls? Okay, well, so again, like I could probably talk to you for hours about this because <laughs> bra sizing is so complicated and it's another one of my big pet peeves. So. Bras are sized unlike any other type of clothing. So you know how you, when you go to the store and you buy jeans, like you're either a six or you're an eight, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's no, there's no fuss about it. Like you put on one size, you're too small. You put on the other size, you're just right. You put on the other size, you're too big. And you know what your size is. And so you would naturally assume that bras are sized the same way. You would <laughs> naturally assume that A cups are always small and D cups are always large. Well, turns out that's not true at all. And in fact, um, bras are sized using something called sister sizing, which is completely backwards and completely illogical. It's, it's based on a system from literally 100 years ago that makes no sense. But essentially, um, what, you have, what you have in sister sizing is you have a bunch of sizes that sound totally different that will fit your breasts exactly the same. And the only difference between them is how long or short the underband is. So for example, a 32D, 34C, 36B, and 38A all fit the same size breast. And the only difference is how long or short the underband is. And I even brought some examples here to show you. So I have these two, these two bras here, these two Calvin Klein bras, and I don't know if you can see the tags or not, but one is one is a 38A and one is a 32D. So an A and a D cup, right? So the, the cup should be totally different, but they're not. They're exactly the same, and I'll show you. Can you see that one is a 32D and, a, and one's a 38A? I don't know if you can see that or not, but. I can't, but I trust you. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, they are. So one's a 32D, one's a 38A, and you can see the cups are exactly the same. 
They're exactly, they're exactly the same size. And the way the manufacturers make these bras is so they take this front and they go to the factory and they say, make this front over and over and over again, which the factory does and it's really efficient for them because they're making the same thing over and over again. And then they say, just make these wings a different size. So the fronts are exactly the same, even though one says A and one says D. And this part is the only difference. So that's super confusing, right? If no one has ever told you about sister sizing or if women don't know about sister sizing, you would go in, put a bra on your breast and say, hey, this bra fits me, this must be my cup size. And then you would look to find probably a band that would fit you, right? Like that's probably how you would do it. When in actuality, um, if you go in and say this, this um, cup size fits you, but the band doesn't fit you, you're not supposed to stay in the same cup size. So if, if, for example, you put on the 38A and you're like, hmm, this cup fits really well, but I, you know, the band's too big, you don't go down to a 36A, you go down to a 36B. And so that is, and there's a chart on my website, which, which shows all of the different sister sizes, but you really need to go, when you go bra shopping, you should go armed with a sister size chart because that way you go in to the store educated and you don't have, like you're not at the mercy of the bra fit or trying to tell you you're a certain size. Thank you. Yeah, my mind is completely blown right now. Uh, <laughs> but I do want to ask when we get fitted, I know you have some recommendations for the best places to get fitted. Can you share those with us? Sure. Um, well, one of my top recommendations is Nordstrom. They, I feel like they train their fitters really well. I think that that's a great place to go. Um, independent bra boutiques are also really good. What I, what I will say, um, and this is also something to be aware of, is that it, you know, especially when you go into an independent boutique or even Nordstrom's, if you don't know about sister sizing is that there are two fit philosophies um, in different parts of the world. So in one fit philosophy, they fit, they fit the band really bit, really loose. And in the other fit philosophy, they fit it really tight. So independent bra boutiques tend to fit more like they do in Europe, which is, means a very tight band. So for example, um, like if I'm a 32D in most like American retailers, like say Victoria's Secret or Soma or something like that, if I go to an independent bra boutique, they might put me in my sister's size, which is a 30 double D. And you, you need to, this is why it's really important to know about sister sizes, because um, you need to be able to speak up and say, you know what, I know that technically you might think this is the right fit for me, but I really hate the feel of a super tight band. So I'd like to go up just one more band. And as long as the band isn't riding up in the, in the back and you can't pull it out too, too far, it's fine to go up one band. In fact, I think most women can go between one or two bands. It's what, What's really problematic is when the band starts to ride up or you can pull it out really far, then you're not getting that support. Um, but yeah, but I would say Nordstrom or an independent bra boutique, but either place you want to be sure that you can return the bra after you've worn it. Because sometimes in a fitting, you know, especially if you're in a place that kind of it has the fit philosophy of, of tight of fitting in tighter bands, you mm -hmm. might think like, okay, I guess this is okay. But then after you've worn it for 10 hours, you, you, you just like, gosh, this is so uncomfortable. I, I just can't stand this. Um, and you want to be able to return it. And of course, Nordstrom has a really great return policy and, and yeah. hopefully most independent bra boutiques do as well. But sports bras, I want to definitely make sure that we that we talk about those because that is your thing. That's your mm -hmm. jam. You love sports bras more than anyone I've ever seen in the world. <laughs> um, what can you say to us about just some really quick um, tips about uh, a, a sports bra, how it should fit? And yeah, so the, I, I think one of the biggest tips I can tell you is the more the bra stretches, the more the breasts will move. So so um, women will often opt for like, oh, this, this sports bra is really stretching and comfortable, which is amazing for yoga if that's what you want to use it for. But if you're using it for a high impact exercise like running, it's not going to work for you for, for the same reasons I just explained with everyday bras. If, if you're running, you want to look for a bra um, that that basically fits you like it was made for you, which means that it has adjustability. It has adjustability in the straps. It has an adjustable underband, so it can fit you really well in those areas. Um, and also doesn't have too much stretch in the straps. So you want like from here to here, if you can find a sports bra that has no stretch at all from here to here, very little stretch in the cups, um, that will probably uh, work out for you much better than one that has a ton of that has a ton of stretch. And the other thing I'll say is that the larger your breasts are, the more you need to find a more technical bra with with less mm -hmm. stretch in it. Um, so and you want to look for not so there are bras that are like compression where they just you know smush your breasts, and then there are bras that 
I call encapsulated compression when there's a little bit of room for the breast, but there's still that compression as well. And and full on compression with no room with no additional room is, is great for smaller busted women. But as your bust gets larger, you do need to have a little bit of that encapsulation as well. So that's another thing. That's another thing to look for. Um, and then, you know, again, I, I think the two things that uh, women make a mistake within sports bras as well as that shoulder, not evaluating the type of shoulders you have. So again, if you have narrow or sloping shoulders, you want to make sure that your, your straps aren't, aren't falling off. So maybe that you have a racer back. You mm -hmm. want to make sure that if it is a racer back, it's not coming up too high on the fleshy part of your neck because that can put undue pressure there and it cause, cause headaches and that type of thing. Um, so you want to, you want to look for that as well and, and just make sure that it's a, a good fit for the type of sport that you're doing. I know what it's like to have a good bra, but I also know <laughs> what it's like to have a bad bra, um, sports bra or otherwise. So this, this information I think is so helpful. It's going to be so helpful to so many people out there. Uh, but what can we do? I, I know a lot. I feel like that more than I ever wanted to think about knowing about uh, bras because I studied your website <laughs> and I learned so much more even through this interview. But um, for those who want to learn even more, uh, how can they get in touch with you? How can they follow you? Tell us all of the places where we can find you. Okay, so um, bravolution.com on my website, there's lots of videos there, uh, educational videos where you can learn about bras. I also have a, a TED Talk. So if you go on TED.com and you search for my name, I have a TED Talk about bras. Um, and some of the tips that I discussed today are on there. And then so there's some other tips as well. And I talk a little bit about the, his the crazy history of bras, which you might find interesting, um, if not infuriating <laughs> when, you, when you listen to it. Um, uh, and then I also so I'm on Instagram at bravolution. Uh, Twitter is also uh, at Bravolution as well. Um, and then we're on Facebook and I think it's the Bravolution on Facebook, but you can follow us on any of those places. Awesome. I think that's so wonderful. And one of the things I really love about your website and your social media feeds is that you show women of all different sizes. Thank you. That, that's really important to me. And that's something that I did, um, you know, right from the beginning before even other brands were doing it, because yes, that was yes. one thing that I felt about sports bras in particular is that sports bras for the longest time were catered to a certain type of person because they yeah. just assumed that if you're not this size, you're not exercising, which is ridiculous and right. really right. frustrating for me. And so I just wanted to show like, you know, everybody's wearing with wearing sports bras and everybody, everybody is beautiful. And, you know, like you should, you should really celebrate your body and celebrate exercise. Um, and, and I do wish that manufacturers would, I, I think more and more manufacturers are getting there, making um, sports bras for all, all kinds of bodies and, and breasts. And that, that's a good thing, but I, that's, I, that's been on that, I've been on that bandwagon since the beginning because I just think it's so important um, that everybody's represented. Yes, yes, I, I love that. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you so much for coming on The Rich Life and sharing all of your knowledge with us and and, and helping us be part of the Bravolution uh, that is not coming, it's here, right? The Bravolution is here. Bravolution is here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richie. It's such a pleasure. It's such a, so, so great to see you again, too. Yeah, yeah. And make sure everyone, again, that you follow Laura on all of her uh, social media, and she has some really great videos on her website. So make sure you check those out too at bravolution.com. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to The Rich Life so that you can stay up to date with all of the latest. Until next time, take care, everybody.